The time has come for our final theme park vlog of the Asia Mega Trip 2017. I can just say, if you've watched all of the vlogs we've done from this trip so far, you've done well to put up with me and Alex for so long. You really well, have. Me, me in particular. <laughs> yeah. We've had an absolutely amazing time, and we're leaving this trip with so many new favourite things. We we'll have a new, a new favourite dart ride, three new favourite dart rides across the three parks, and of course, a brand new favourite theme park, Tokyo Disney Sea, where we're going to wrap up today. This park is absolutely beautiful. It really is. Uh, I'm falling in love with it, and you walk around here, the Mediterranean Harbour, and all the other themed ports that make up this park, and you just fall in love with it, you really do. I really recommend anyone get yourself out here and come and see this park. And today we're going to be going around doing a few of the favourites that we did in day one, and we've seen a few new bits as well uh, that I'll share with you guys in the vlog. So we'll also be sharing our thoughts on the nighttime show held right here on the lake. Fantastic, and let's just say it's absolutely awesome. We've watched it a couple of times now, but I can't wait to share it with you guys tonight and uh, tell you our thoughts on that awesome show. Let's just say it is not one to be missed and it looks so much better in person than on camera. So stay tuned at the end of the vlog for Fantasmic. Look at this, I'm so sad, but I'm so happy at what we've seen. I really am. Incredible. All these parks have just kept getting better and better and I must just say, I've said it in all the vlogs, but the cast members are absolutely outstanding. Uh, at all the parks that we've done, uh, all the Disney parks, however here, they really take it to that next level. They are absolutely awesome. So here we go, our final theme park vlog, Tokyo Disney Sea. Mount Prometheus, everybody. Hotel Hightower, the Tower of Terror. So many little details in this queue line, there really is. And I've only been on it twice, but I know this is your fourth, fourth, time. fourth time, and each time there's so many little details. And you say there's differences inside each of the little loading areas yeah, as well. Yeah, each of the loading areas have got their own different sort of theming and scenery, like from different suits of arms from different times in history. So I noticed I was down in this shaft just here, it's all themed for like great British uh, shields and swords and things from the war, from the wars years ago, like the Battle of Hastings and things. Um, you've got sort of temp Greek temple goddess style in this one, I believe. And obviously we went in that one yesterday, so we probably, can't, we probably remember what it was, I can't, which was sort of like um, maces and other weapons. It's really, really cool how, how much level of detail there is. It's like each one's its own little museum of collection, it's great. And you're about to enter the shaft that takes you to that collection. So we've just come off Tower of Terror. I do enjoy it, but I'll stick by what I said in the day one vlog. The fact that you've got a seat belt strap over here along with the belt around your waist, I just think it's a bit too much and I don't get any air time feeling on that, I'll be honest. Uh, so it does mean that Tower of Terror in Florida is still my number one, I think. But, I'm just uh, going to go to the gym. Oh, okay. Gym? What? Yeah. Well, what? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's closed. It's closed. Oh, steam room it is. Steam room. I tell you what, if you don't want to go to the steam room, how about a nice massage? Sounds good, this way. I'm up for one of those as well. Oh, it's fake. The whole thing's a lie. <laughs> Isn't it all of Disney though? <gasps> I can't believe you just said that. Well, that's what we love about it. The fact that they immerse you into this world. But yeah, I do very much enjoy that. And the theming is gorgeous, like all this in here. So detailed, isn't it? <laughs> Go for a paddle. Yeah, I just wish that having that second ride just confirmed. I was, I did say it in the day one when I first came off. I thought maybe I just need another go on it, but I love the theming. I love the whole feel of it. I like the fact it isn't the Twilight Zone. It's a little bit different. However, the ride system, I just feel like it builds up so much. The pre-show is so nice, as you saw in the footage, and it just builds up so much, and you just don't really get 
a lot out of it in terms of thrill, but it's a very, very nice experience ride. I have to say, I know in the other Tower of Towers that you're used to, it's nice to walk into the gift shop and buy plenty of Tower of Towers merchandise. But you don't need that here, because you've got Nemo and Frenzy ride on merch. I must admit, in terms of merchandise, I've not been that impressed. The store all. layouts have been very interesting. Like, there's been nothing really themed to that attraction in every store we've been in. No. See, the Nemo and Frenzy ride, I think, seems to be taking over every store. It's a bit of a shame. And pens. And pens. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, it's quite funny actually, yesterday, I know you weren't there about the vlog yesterday from Disneyland Part 2, but I have quite a funny joke about pens, how many pens, but you have a bit of a pen watch towards the end of the vlog. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, get some water. Because I think I saw on. three lots of shops with a massive wall of pens, literally about that big. Do you want to buy a pen? <laughs> yeah. For sure. But yeah, in terms of merchandise, you know, it's not very good at all. Lots of character stuff, which is great. Some of the best characters I've seen. And I obviously made this purchase. This T-shirt is lovely, really, really nice. There's a daytime version as well that I've purchased. Have you noticed we've dressed up a bit today? You probably haven't, especially with Alex. But you know. yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah, a very, very nice attraction and some lovely details. I do like the fact that this is themed to be the swimming pool, so to speak. It's very nice. Just feels a bit empty. <laughs> Fantastic, coming up later on. Hotel High Tower. <laughs> We're going on Aquatopia. I really do love the whole theme in around this area. Oh, Discovery. So nice. Ten minute wait for Aquatopia. No laxatives, please. No laxatives? What? I can't sit on your lap. No. Oh, I don't want to go on then, come on. <laughs> You're a strange boy. I know. Nice and quiet it seems today. Opening hours, 8.30 till 10, even on a quieter day. I can't believe on the biggest trip you've ever done, people are finally seeing you as a man. Like, it started off as a young boy running around Disneyland Paris like this, and now the man. The man. It is. If he can call me that. Yeah. <laughs> well, maturity wise, I'm not so sure. <laughs> Aquatopia. Hello. Interaction time. Get ready for a spin. Yeah. Great views of the Disney Sea Electric Railway and Mount Prometheus. Hello. Hi. Konnichiwa. The interaction on this is so good. <laughs> Hello. It's another good one to do at night as well. Lots of light in, all underwater, and Whirlpool. all around that rock work. Yeah, Whirlpool. Uh oh. <laughs> where are we going? It's really spinning. So clever, you don't really know where you're going. Hello. Aquatopia. I'd love to see it with the lake drain just here to get a bit more of a, an idea for the system. You can't really tell on camera but how it is basically there's a track under the water and it seems to cross each other at various points and then they've got the sensors on the boats as well so obviously they don't crash into each other. But it's very very clever if you look how sto stop there you go look how close it stops look at that. It's so good it lines them all up here as well brings them back into the loading area. And visually, it looks very impressive as well because you can't hardly see the track. Very, very cleverly doing. It just looks like they're all going to sort of bash into each other, and I do, I do really like it. What a ride! And now, time for another money saving tip. Just in case you haven't heard this one already throughout the vlogs, we have mentioned it in a couple of them, but there is free drinking fountains around the Disney parks that are really worth making the most of. They are. And they're all in different locations. Maybe you can even go around and make yourself like a little credit card, like credit scorecard. No, I guess a credit card, like credit, a credit card we'll call it. The TBW credit card where you go around with a little piece of paper and you mark them off when you've done them all. 
<laughs> That'd be good, wouldn't it? Good, yeah, and Joe, for just a small fee, you can drink this water. Oh, wait, it's free. It is free, yeah. I mean, if you pay me, I will bring you to Disney and you can drink this water. <laughs> yes. But yeah, they're all the way around the park and they're well worth using, especially to save money on going them uh, fizzy drinks. I mean, I know a lot of you out there like a good classic Coke. Yeah. And I do personally. I, I do like the fish in this shack. I'm going to call this the Love Shack. Love Shack? It's a little old place where we can get together. Oh, it's it's just all the details, isn't it? Little hidden Mickey lock. Very really subtle. There's so many hidden Mickeys around, isn't it? We'll have to pour it out a few more later on, because you spotted oh, some the other day. It's starting to rain, the heavens have opened. I know, our last day, and it's uh, starting to rain, get us used to back home. I you say that, apparently the weather's been uh, quite nice back home, supposedly. So. As long as you don't start seeing weather girls again, we'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot quieter today, you can tell with the footpaths, a lot more reasonable walking around. I also found yesterday, this is the area, if you love Donald Duck to be, you can sell Donald Duck bottle toppers, the Donald Duck meet and greets, you can meet the free ca caballeros, is that how they say it? I think that's the, the bottom, bottom it. The meet and greets really nice actually, yeah, I went down there yesterday and had a little look, it's actually down by the little landing dock for the yeah. uh, for the boat. This is like Donald Duck. Yeah, yeah, yesterday really nice. I saw some pretty crazy, I've got to admit, Disney Donald Duck fans and they were they're all in the blue. I mean, I saw this blue probably about half the size of me. <laughs> and that, that's a pretty big size in itself. Um, walking around in this big Donald Duck costume. But it's like a big nappy he had on. Yeah. Like, Donald <laughs> and he's walking like this down, down this pathway. Honest to God, he's walking like this. I'm sort of going northern then, Yorkshire. I'm like Mr. Bloom. Oh, God. Uh, I know. Uh, but no, walking like this. And I felt so sorry for his girlfriend, because his girlfriend was just in normal clothes. I'm like, that's when you know your boyfriend's got a bit of an obsession with Disney. Yeah. I'm not going to lie, I've got an obsession with Disney. I don't wear a nappy to a theme park. Unless I'm going to say I was riding Shambhala, I'm probably going to need one. Well, we were around on the monorail yesterday on another note, and I wanted to just see what we could see from it, quite literally. You wouldn't realise here, but the back, of Indiana Jones is a car park. Standing here and looking at that, you would not think that there is a huge parking lot around the back. It is crazy, it's so well hidden in with the trees and the landscaping and all the warehouse that Indiana Jones, bear in mind that is a massive dark ride, a huge warehouse is completely themed from this side. It is mental, you feel so immersed in Lost River Delta. You're doing all the themed areas here. Uh, but yeah, I just thought that was amazing, going past the monorail and seeing and thinking, oh my God, is that the temple from Indiana Jones over there? Crazy. few days inside this park now but the theming it is just crazy I still can't get to terms with it all. We see a new attraction now the Magic Lamp Theatre where there's some sort of show based on Aladdin and the Genie it's got a 15 minute wait I believe it's some sort of 3D show so I won't be able to film it because obviously it won't really make sense if it's in 3D uh, but it does look really really good in here and of course you've got all the theming outside as well the Magic Lamp Theatre what a gorgeous area of the park this really is. So we got on the caravan carousel after as well. Looks like a double deck carousel, doesn't it, from here? And I actually thought it was. It's very clever. It's actually two single deck carousels, uh, one on top of each other, and there's two operating panels and everything. It's quite clever because from here, it does look like it's actually a, a double deck carousel. But uh, yeah, very, very clever. It's a gorgeous building for it, though. Probably the nicest carousel building I've ever seen, that one. Really nice. Right, you ready to go meet Jeannie? Yeah. Jeannie. To the Jeannie. Let's go. So we've just come out of the Magic Lamp Theatre and I must say I think we found the first thing in this park where I'm a little bit disappointed. I don't think it was the fact that it, it was in another language either what sort of didn't it? Well, it didn't help the experience, but I don't think it was that what didn't really do it. It was just the general feel of it. I mean, then 3D shows, basically there was two actors uh, that were on the stage, like a, a magician, wasn't it, on the stage and 
<laughs> it just didn't quite. There was no sort of Aladdin, no, no genie. Wasn't it? Yeah, like the genie was just on the screen as, as 3D. What I did quite like though, there was a few nice visual effects on that, uh, which is quite cool. You had like the the lamp just there, and then the genie sort of went up into the screen, the which is quite well. cool. The theme and the theming nice. of the venue was very very nice. But in general, I, I thought that was a bit disappointing. That one, I was. It's the first attraction in this park where I was actually sat there thinking, right, what shall we do next, sort of thing. Whereas all the other ones have been that immersed into it. About 15 minute show uh, with about a 10 minute pre-show before it as well. So you are in there a good 25 minutes, half an hour really. I think the Little Mermaid that you see in Hollywood Studios, where it's partially like that, partially video screen, is a lot more appealing than that. But Maybe that's what I was trying to be, I don't know, but... I'm, I'm glad we went in, it's a nice little thing to go and see, and, but it's not outstanding, whereas everything else in this park is outstanding. That, I sort of thought, was a bit... Mm. But I'm glad we went to do it, it's a once-a-trip thing, that is, definitely. It's not, you wouldn't go in there and think, right, I'm going to do more. But we're going on the caravan now, the caravan, carousel. This is gorgeous, look at all this theme in here. All this for a carousel. Genie! Hey. Welcome to the Caravan Carousel! I like the little Lambo, which is his hair. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I'll, uh, which one should I go on? Should I go on this one or this one? I'll tell you what, I'll come on here. Hello. If you're feeling a little hoarse, you should let go. You reckon? You're struggling to get up? Oh my god. Oh yeah. This is really cool. I like how you can uh, sit on a genie. That's really cool. Genie! Genie! What was that for your first wish? My first wish? Yeah. Nothing, I'm quite happy. Well, to be fair, Let's come back to I Disney like this park. I like this park in the UK. Yes, yeah, yeah. The park is good as this in the UK, like so. Unfortunately, I don't think that's going to impact me any time soon. Well, you never know. Here we go, on the caravan carousel. And now it's going to sing for you now. Got to keep one jump ahead of the bread line, one swing ahead of the sword. I steal only what I can afford. You know what? And that's everything. One jump ahead of the hit. <laughs> <laughs> I feel only what I can afford. I've got the word. I do really like this. The fact that it's like a classic carousel, but of course you've got that Aladdin soundtrack with it. Very carousel type of soundtrack. Very good. Rip him open, take his in. Gotta eat the seal, gotta seal the eat. You're my only friend, Shawnee. Gotta keep the and again, we've got Sean and Alex's lights, bulb services now. I'm trying to spot one out, so but I can't. Very well. Yeah. All light bulbs working. Presentation there is absolutely amazing. What a gorgeous park. Sorry, Genie, that he's giving you a bit of a bash. You know, it's a good bash. You reckon? Oh. Da -da 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 -da. Hey! I love this. I really like it, yeah. Where is one going just below us? It's so nice, isn't it? Just goes to show that if you had a lot of theming, a flat ride can be a really memorable experience. It's the same with Europa Park, where a lot of the rides there as well. Soundtracks really add to the ride. This Agrabah water is brought to you by the natural springs of the nearby Weaver Hills. Alex, we're not on the sky ride now, mate. But we're gonna go meet Ariel! Yeah! That way to Ariel! That way! Ariel! Ariel's that way! Mermaid Lagoon! Mermaid Lagoon! Ariel, no running in the Disney parks, please! Yeah! Thank you! Hi, Ariel! Are you enjoying your human legs today? We are, yeah! Yeah! Oh, that's fantastic! Raining, though! Yeah! Raised in England too, where we're from. Oh, we're from England. Wow, that is a long swim from here, huh? It is a long way away. Your plan needs to go to England. Yes. Oh, I'm sure you'd love to visit it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yes, it's a photo. Oh, yes, it's a photo. On the way out from Ariel, look out for the hidden Mickey and the rocks. Look at that. So subtle. I like how they put all the little bits around it as well to make it sort of blend in. Yeah, look at that. And that was actually pointed out to me by a cast member yesterday. And the cast member was saying she walks around this area on the daily basis when she's doing a cleaning and other things. And there's that cast member's up there. And she says she notices new ones every single day when she's walking around. She said even she's worked here for 10 years, but she still finds new hidden Mickeys every day. That's I think crazy, incredible. that is. I mean, 
you can come to this park all the time and always spot new things. And I'm sure the next time we come, we'll see even more different things inside this park to what we've seen this time. And of course, yes, you've got your main standout attractions and shows in this park, but you're always going to find those little details. And in the day one vlog, we did have a little look around Mermaid Lagoon inside, but I wanted to show you some of the little hidden corridors and caves and stuff what there is inside here, because it is absolutely crazy. And the fact that this here is a massive warehouse, but the whole thing is themed entirely. I mean, all, it, it doesn't from here now, and then you get inside, it is huge. I was walking around off camera the other day, and I just thought I'm gonna have to come back in here at some point and show you all the little caves and areas there is to look at. On those, what do you call them? Oh, feet. Oh, here we go. Really nice scores playing around this park as well. I mean, you think how long it must have taken to design something like this. Look at it. And imagine building it. <laughs> you must have a lot of patience. More patience than me playing Planet Coaster to build a part like this. Wow. It's so visually pleasing inside this area. It's got to be one of the most gorgeous themed areas I've ever seen inside a theme park. I know they're all amazing here, but of course, this is all indoors and that's what really makes it. And as Alex pointed out, all the supports to the building are all themed in as well, aren't they? Like all the, the corals and all that kind of stuff. It is just stunning. I think in the UK, something like this would be amazing. I mean, I love what Fantasy Island have done with the pyramid. Uh, it is going in the right direction. And more stuff like that in the UK is needed, to be honest, especially with our weather back home. Imagine something like this in the middle of a, of a city or something back home. It'd go down so well. And I think Merlin should maybe be looking at doing that instead of building more sea life aquariums and dungeons and stuff. Something like this in an indoor themed, not Lego branded, themed by just a unique experience. And the first thing with this is you'd expect to just come in, walk straight down, and just be rides and attractions at the side. However, there's some really nice little secret areas if we go into Ariel's playgrounds. Hello. So you come down here, you've actually got like a little netting walkway you can go around all the top which is quite nice in a way it kind of reminds me of Arthur at Europa Park in here as well however I must point out this is a lot bigger building than Arthur yeah there's so much to explore each area of this park has got its own little exploration hey, areas hey to Mickey. Mickey another one there Some more obvious than others as well. Oh, oh. Here he comes. Whee! <laughs> so nice in here, and even all the roof all themed as well. He's got a new little friend there behind him. Whee. It is good skipping music, isn't it? When you stand here, you can really appreciate all the detail that's gone into everything. Really nice lighting in here as well. They've really just thought about every little detail. Another thing as well, I've noticed in here alone, air conditioning and heating. So it's, yeah. not, it's an all year round attraction, it's great. You can literally come in here anytime, rain or shine. Yeah, rain or shine, you come and have some fun. Also, like in the walls here, you got like that water effect in the side, and there's actually a footpath through there as well, so it actually looks quite cool. People who are coming out that way, uh, so they can sort of see you all in here. It's really nice. What is he doing now? This way, there's more to see downstairs. This way. So nice. The 
there's so many of these. There's about three or four different caverns all around this area, all with different things inside. It's in the chest. <laughs> Oh, you got the loot. <laughs> it's all the little things. A mirror. I found it. Hello. I found it. You got it. What we got? Phone. Uh, <laughs> oh no. What about? What's the thing? Your attention, please. The Disneyland Limited. <laughs> That's nice, good bow. Really good bow. Gotcha! Oh my god. <laughs> Scare maze. Well, to the cavern of mermaids. I mean, it's areas like this that are gorgeous and it really takes you away from the rest of the hustle and bustle of the theme park. Can you just uh, pull on the yellow tab for me, please? Pull on the yellow tab. <laughs> I feel like this is a boss waiting for me. Oh my god, a little tunnel for you. There he goes. See you later. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Welcome to my crib. <laughs> here he is. You got an audience here. Look at him. Wee. Give him a, give him a cheer. Yeah. Theme Park Worldwide on YouTube. Check it out. YouTube. She doesn't understand, Alex. She doesn't understand. Little mirror maze. Hello. <laughs> just keeps getting better and better this part, doesn't it? There's so much to see. I really wish we had more time here to see it all. It's like a little baby seating area over there as well, which is quite cool. It's really nice how Disney think of all the little things, and it means that obviously, if some of the bigger kids want to go on some of the rides with the adults, of course, the mum or dad can wait over here with the really small ones. With this free water, you even get a cup next to it as well. You wouldn't get that back home, would you? I know it's the law to give you water if you ask for it, but that's like readily available to have in the park. Really, really good. Ready for the water review? Alex's water review, replacing Sean's food review. Cold. 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10 on the water. Sebastian. Sebastian's. Welcome to Thought Park Resort, where we're going on the flying fish. The Flundering Flying Fish. Five minute wait. Flounder, not flounder. Flundering, floundering, whatever it is. Flounder. The Flying Fish. The character's called Flounder. The Flowering Fish of this very part. Yeah, let's go with that. The Flowering Fish. There's a bit of both then, isn't it? Coast to coaster. It's very nice around here. I wouldn't fancy waiting in all of this for it, though. Oh my god. What a lovely little landscapes junior roller coaster, really nice. The waterfalls all down the side. Really nice. Let's get on board. We go on the lift now. I'm on the back row of this one. Gonna get some air time hopefully. Nice views. You can just see the crane over there as well, starting work on soaring. Coming soon to Disney Sea. Nice views. 
little bit rainy. Into a helix. Air time. Whee. And that's it, end of the coaster. Very nice. Just had another ride then on Sinbad. Had a boat to myself on that one. Now we're going on Indy. Indy! Back on Indy. Just thought I'd show you a bit more of the interior queue line. It's gorgeous in here. So obviously this is the temple building, what you can see from outside. It's actually sponsored by Oxo in here as well, look. <laughs> Tic Tac Toe, it's sponsored All the way around. Good day. And this is gorgeous, really, really high up there as well. All the paintings all the way round as well. A little bit of Christmas garland hanging up. Yeah. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everybody. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Oh my God, the Easter celebrations. I can't believe they're still celebrating Easter. Apparently tomorrow is the last day of Easter here. So I don't know what day is it? I don't even know what day it is tomorrow. But April, yeah, it it's like Easter. Easter's gone from April, May, until near the end of June at this part. It's crazy. It's a really big event for them here though, because like I said, they have the special Easter parade that I showed some clips of in the day one vlog. If you do want to see anything that we don't cover today, we did do it so much in that day one vlog from this part. We pretty much saw every major thing here. This vlog's a bit more about going around, discovering some of the other more quaint areas, and of course, showing you Fantasmic a little bit later on, along with just summarizing over the whole trip, really, and uh, from this park, our favorite theme park now in the world, and it is absolutely stunning. I do kind of feel like it would excel even more if it had a big standout roller coaster in this park. I know they've got Raging Spirits, but I think it'd be really nice in the long term to see another major coaster, maybe something along the lines of a Matt Mega coaster. Uh, I mean, you look at the Toy Story Slinky Dog coaster, what's currently being built over in Walt Disney World in Hollywood Studios. Something like that here would go down really well. Still a family ride uh, with a couple of launches on it. Uh, through one of the different ports. I think it'll be really, really nice going forward. But obviously, they've already got long-term plans. I mean, Soarin's coming for 2019. We've already started construction on that, and as you saw earlier on, uh, the crane is up, starting the build for Soarin. And apparently, it's gonna be a bit of a different version of Soarin, a different film. It's gonna be unique to this park and fit in with the Mediterranean Harbor. Look at some of the concept art last night, actually, online, doing a bit of research. Uh, and it seems like you're gonna be sitting on a bit of a different sort of themed vehicle for this one. You're gonna have a bit more of a different storyline. So I look forward to coming back and seeing that in a couple of years time but for now I just appreciate this really nice theme queue line Another ride there on Indiana Jones. It really is a spectacular dark ride. But wow, mysterious island. Every time I walk into this area, I just feel the need to either get my camcorder out or get my phone out and take a picture because it is just absolutely gorgeous. I'm so immersed into just looking around and seeing it all. And I just want to show you guys it, and I just can't capture it in the way that it feels being here. All the little waterfalls, the sound effects. There's not so much a uh, score playing around this area. It's more a combination of sound effects on top of each other. Obviously, you've got the heavy machinery sort of sound effects at the top, just the natural water sounds underneath every so often. You have the steamer coming through. It's a combination of sound effects that really make this area. And of course, little buildings as well, like the queue line for 20,000 leagues under the sea. The Nautilus there as well, very, very similar, if not a replica of that that can be found in Discoveryland at Disneyland Paris. And of course, they've got the walkthrough there as well, which is quite cool. Imagine that, got a walkthrough underneath. We've got a couple of benches that we just love sitting on, haven't we, in this park? And this bench here, you get a great view looking that way. And we've sat on the bench over that side as well, looking down this way, and it is stunning, isn't it?
And of course, imagine building a rise that just changed to the centre of the earth. Obviously, your whole station area and things is over there. But it goes 360 all the way around this. And you can't tell that in reality, this is just a big warehouse with some rock work on the side. But imagine building something like that. It is crazy. You seem very quiet. I'm enjoying Taking it. Taking it all in. On that note, let's get back on. Wow. This has to be our favourite drinking fountain in the whole of the park. Of course, you've got this one just here that works next to it. And this one just here, where the Imagineers have made sure the rocks have gone over the top. It's such a cool little thing, what they didn't have to do, but they have done. I mean, how awesome is that? It's like the rocks have just sort of grown round over time as the lava's been seeping down for Prometheus. Even got the little button in there as well, really cool. Still can't get over the level of detail down here, it really is fantastic. Everything has been thought of, and it's so much more than just the actual theming. It's the lighting that really makes a big part of this attraction. Just here on the left-hand side, it looks like it just goes on forever and ever, and that's because of the positioning with the lighting. It's very, very clever. I'd love to know what goes through the Imagineers' heads when they're coming up with stuff like this, wouldn't you? It is just crazy, isn't it? Let's get back on board. We've also managed to do plenty of rides across the past few days. On June, we've probably had about eight rides, which is really, really good. A lot more than expected. We had another fantastic ride there on June to the centre of the earth. I'm going back on 20,000 leagues under the sea for another run on that. June is just such an incredible ride, and I'll summarise this whole park and that in a bit more detail in our big summer at the end of this vlog. But it really is amazing. Like I said, I've done it about eight times now this trip, which is more than I anticipated. It really is. And we are theme park worldwide on YouTube. Yeah, YouTube. Oh, look at the glasses. Yeah, very cool. Yeah. You got the bow ties on. Very nice. Yeah. And you got your ears as well. Yeah. It's a very good ride. Every time I go on it, I notice different little details. I love Japanese people. They're so friendly. The culture is amazing over here. I love it. I can't wait to come back at some point in the near future. Uh, but yeah, every time I go on that, I notice different things. And we've been quite lucky at getting quite a few front rows. But don't worry if you're not on the front row. Even if you sat a bit further back, because uh, obviously it's six passengers per vehicle, uh, three rows. Even if you're sitting a bit further back, you still get some really nice shots and different angles, so to speak, of the theme in there. And the fire effect, spot on, really good. Bit of an eyebrows burner. Let's get on. その中に満ちた子供にはコードが進化を遂げた知的生命体が存在する可能性職人の任務は忍んだぞ解き明かすことだマニュアル設置隊と検討準備完了よろしい潜水艇の使用3時台とは手元の腕バーで操作できる覚
And then you've got little things in there, like the coral, all moving nice and gentle in there. Uh, it's just so much little detail what Disney put into these attractions that sometimes it takes you a few times to actually ride it to actually really appreciate it and see the detail. I think that's the thing with that for me. I rode it in the day one vlog and loved it, but that time I really appreciated it even more and seen all those little details, even things like the propellers on the back of the other submarines just going round and giving it that really nice effect. And the scene where you've got like uh, sort of the big sort of attack scene, so to speak, that's really nice on that. And I just love all the Jules Verne styles. I always have done, especially over at Disneyland Paris as well, uh, with Discovery Land. I've always just enjoyed the steampunky Jules Verne side of things. It is gorgeous. What a beautiful park. I am going to miss this place so much. You can also point out it's really strange to actually see quite a few steps inside a Disney park. There's quite a few different sets of steps. I think it's quite nice actually. It has a bit of texture because Disney parks are normally quite flat. They have slopes and stuff in places, but never normally steps. It's quite an interesting one. Just the little things that you notice when you've done them all. God, it's so weird, isn't it, saying that? Not the nicest of days today, though. As we make our way through the afternoon here at Tokyo Disney Sea, the last theme park vlog of the Asia Mega Trip 2017. It's still strange saying that, but what an absolute battle of a trip it really has been. It's just been incredible. The best trip I've ever done, and probably the best one I'm going to do for a very long time. Wow. <laughs> We've done it, we really have. And we're still yet to see something we hate. Go on. Well, we're still yet to oh, see yeah, something. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, like I said, the only weak attraction I can think of now in this part was the Aladdin show thing we did earlier. But at least that was well themed and Very the well theatre was gorgeous. It just wasn't really right compared to what we've seen Aladdin based before, was it? We've seen some really good Aladdin stuff, haven't we, Six over the resorts, years, you know? 12 parks, two water parks, and countless numbers of hours of no sleep for, from excitement. And a lot of money. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. I tried to think how much money I've pumped into Disney over the years, but I tell you what, it's been worth it for the memories, the times we've shared together. I couldn't have um, done with anyone else. Yeah, it really oh, is amazing, you. all these Disney parks. Wow. We'll uh, see you a little bit later on. What a stunning place. It might be raining, but it's not ruining our last day here at Tokyo Disney Sea. Alex is enjoying it, taking in the beautiful oh, views of the American waterfront. You actually feel like you're at a waterfront in America. This is actually one of my favourite views in the park. Of course, you got the Hightower Hotel just over there. <laughs> you've got this wonderful bridge along the side with the Disney Sea electric railway that goes along it. Of course, you've got the SS Columbia just over there to the right. And just some beautiful views just across it. It's so nice, one of the best sort of angles to look at this park. Now, I know you on theme park worldwide absolutely love benches. We can see the bench quite like this one here. A bit wet, but Duffy's little bench. So cute. Duffy the Disney Bay, strap me Duffy in and take a photo of him. In that angle. And you know what they get 10 minute queues for this? It is crazy. In terms of merchandise here. Uh, Timber that is. <laughs> MDF on being q that is. You got that northern accent again. Oh, I know. I thought like Mr. Bloom all day. <laughs> and the we're we're going to head back down to the American Harbour. Oh, so we're going to look around. To American Harbour. We're going to go around somewhere and see some shores. Oh, no, we're not in Blackpool now. <laughs> oh, my love, I'm so <laughs> What sorry. are you going on about? Oh, we're going to go and have a look at the Venetian gondolas and just see all that around there. Not too sure if they're going to be running in this weather. A really good view here, the construction site for Soarin'. Coming 2019, gonna be located just over there. I'm sure the warehouse that Soarin's theatre is gonna be in will be very nicely themed to fit in with the waterfront area. Well, you can hope so, can't you? <laughs> oh, that wasn't in order, don't worry. Stop that earlier on. This is another really nice little quaint area inside Tokyo Disney Sea, located just around the corner. It is part of the Mediterranean Harbour, but I just think it's really nice, just off the main sort of footpath. I just see something I hate in, the, in that restaurant there. Go on. I just see somebody chucking bread up in the air, like soft dough bread. And I'm <laughs> like, I'm sorry, that is not a skill. <laughs> chucking bread in the air, try chucking soup. What a cast man. Try ch yeah, try chucking soup. That's <laughs> all I want to say. Oh, just to, like the mama used to mess up. Like. <laughs> oh, God. You know. How nice is this round here, though? Gorgeous. Yeah, really nice. Best area for the, like, little details. Look at this, all the little bridges that we're on. Of course, you've got the Venetian gondolas that we've not yet been on, but I can't see much action down there, to be honest. Looks like they might be wrapping up, maybe because of the rain. Yeah, I think they are. 
he put his arms up. That's that good. Well, these buildings are really nice and very good details down here. And I believe from doing a bit of research, there's some replicas of buildings actually in Venice in this area as well, which is quite nice. Little touches. I couldn't tell you which ones they were, but nice little touches. Of course, the Venetian gondolas head all the way around this way, out onto the main sort of lake, and then come back round. Great views of Prometheus a bit further back from here as well. I just love this park. I love everything about it. It's a shame about the weather today. But if you do want to see Tokyo Disney City in a bit drier conditions, then check out our day one vlog, where we also ride on all the major attractions throughout this park, including POV action, so make sure you check it out. What a gorgeous little area. So quiet around here as well. It's nice out there's some big open areas, but you've also got some really nice quaint little parts. And Alex, I've got a little present for you, mate. I, I've, I've, I've thrown you a picture. Oh. Yeah. I, I, I've painted this for you. Here it is. Well, to be honest, mate, I'd rather have the MDF for... Hey. Uh, hey. Yeah, I've painted you a picture. Well, where's my face Do you like the detail? It? It's nice, isn't it? Where am I on there? Well, you're not on it, but I just thought I'd paint you it. It's nice, isn't it? It is. Do you know I get much money for it? How much? 3,000 yen. Cancel what we just said. No one wants to go on because of the rain, but they are open. So, of course, me and Alex, we're not scared of a bit of rain, are we? No, no. We don't mind when it means you don't have to queue. Venetian gondolas, let's go. Better than sunburn. Ciao. Here we are on the relaxing Mediterranean harbour. On the Venetian gondolas in Japan, in Tokyo, in the rain. Into the hands. Thank you. It's great. Keep your hands and arms inside the gondola at all times. Thank you. How relaxing is this? I'd like to be able to wear Fantasmic on there, would you? I think it closes during Fantasmic. So, then, Mina san, buongiorno! Buongiorno! Are you enjoying your relaxing trip? Look at your hair. Oh, you look like Martin. <laughs> Everybody likes Martin. Martin is just is so hilarious. And the next mega trip that we do here on Theme Park Worldwide will be me, Martin, Charlotte, and someone you've never met before as well called Leah. So it's going to be a good trip. Someone new on the channel, and now Alex. Yes! How oh, many joking, we all love the milkman. This is so authentic. Yeah. Yeah. Think about all the people back home in England right now. We're sat eating the chicken tikka masala. <laughs> Probably that's what I'm having tea. They're having pizza or chicken tikka masala. There's no in between. Masala. Definitely um, masala. Masala. And, and they're just thinking, you know what? They're out there in Tokyo in the rain, but it's fine. Who's it's Lorraine? Fine. <laughs> it's fine. Do you know why? Why? Because we're not, we're, we're not all after Paddy McGuinness to take me out. So it's fine. You sit and watch that after us. Look really? at this. Yeah. This is beautiful. And I have been to Venice about five years ago, and it is actually very expensive to go on the gondolas in actual Venice. So your best bet, to be honest, is getting a flight coming here. It's probably cheaper. <laughs> Come and have a go on this one. Those are 50 euros. Yeah. <laughs> this is really nice. <laughs> 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 yeah. Out on the main sort of lagoon now. I think he's just going to ride out the water. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. The lake sets on fire. Oh my god. It's really nice that you come out onto this and then go back down the quaint little areas. And... Lovely. Have a pound. Have a pound? There's nothing more authentic than this, is the It's so nice. That Prometheus.
Make the most of this nice, peaceful area, Alex. Because in a couple of years' time, this will be rammed when Soren opens. Literally, it's going to be just there. I'm looking forward to seeing it. Like I said, I do really like Soren now. I didn't really like the original that much, but I think uh, Soren around the world is a lot better than the original, in my Probably opinion. Probably the busiest area of the park. It will be busy around here. Just think all the queue lines and stuff. Hopefully, it'll be really nicely themed all the outside. I was saying that, I was looking at some of the concept art actually last night back at the hotel uh, on the on the computer. And yeah, it does look like it's going to be really nicely themed and fitting very well with the area. You're right there, you're doing a very Mediterranean pose. Very camp pose, I'd say. Personally. Yeah, I'd say that as well. Mediterranean yeah. camp. It is lovely there, all these buildings around here. It's so quiet today as well. I didn't think we'd ever see Disney see this quiet. Wonderful. I reckon we might even the see. The yeah, there we are. We might even see this wall coming out. I'll probably go around here. Why are you singing Jurassic Park for Sora? It's rising, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> it's rising. Welcome to the crane. You can clearly tell where this area is going to expand out, though, can't you? It's, it is asking for it, isn't it? But look at this. Even, why? I just like it. I like the area. I like it, but I don't think it's gonna. It's not gonna ruin anything. It's just a an add on that way, isn't it? So Can't to speak. over the drilling. This is all nice as well. How they've done all this. You've got little plant pots. That's a little touch. What they didn't need to do a lot. Bring a little window in. Yeah. Hello. And you've got a little bit of uh, fake bush at the top as well. Garland. Everybody likes a bit of fake bush. Hopefully they'll keep these ruins though just here. I do like all these ruins. I think they look great from the other side as well. When you're looking across. We'll add the final side hopefully to this area of the park. If you stand here, this is probably the best view you've got of the park. You've got a very much appreciated here, where it's just nothing there. So hopefully there's something nice here just to fill yeah, that. Yeah, well like I said, looking last night on Google at some of the concept art, it does look like it's gonna have a really nice front to it. Welcome to Sean's big cannon! Whee, she's got a big cannon there as well. Oh, look at that. Well, let's give that a tug. Get ready. Oh! Yeah. Fire that cannon. Any more firing? No? Fire your cannon. There we go. Yeah. Blast them off. Yeah. Me. Here we go, quality smoke effect. Oh no, we lost the ball. Oh, that was very good. So another go. Come on. Yeah. It's the little things, isn't it? Just thought we could have a little look around the fortress. We got in here, a little look out. Telescope. We can actually see through that as well. It's good. Really nice views. And Alex is hidden somewhere around here, and the challenge is for me to try and find Alex. I don't know where he is, but he's hidden somewhere around this section. You also get a really good view of Mount Prometheus here from on this little fortress. Gives you a good idea actually of Disney's force perspective as well. Of course, it's still massive because obviously you can see Journey at the center of the earth coming out there, but. Gives you a good idea of how they cleverly make the rocks and things look smaller, uh, well, get smaller, so they look uh, look bigger as it goes up. Very, very clever. Same with the trees as well. Not so much round here, but a lot of the time they'll put some like big trees down the bottom and then put some tiny trees up the top. They do that on the likes of Seven Dwarfs Mine Train and things. Very, very clever. Here we are. So now it's having a blast down there. Whee. Really good. You get a good view as well of where Soaring's going to go over there. And right over in the distance, we can just see the top of oh, Big Thunder Mountain. Over in Tokyo Disneyland. Make sure you check out our day one and two vlog from Tokyo Disneyland as well, where we explore all around that park and see all the beautiful sights and take you along for the ride on the way. Gorgeous. Right, where's Alex? Whee, there he is, up on his turret. Well, don't just stand there, young 
I'm on my way. Please keep your hands, arms, feet and legs inside, please, sir. Cameras must stay below head level. Thank you. <laughs> what an idiot. Oh, yes, hello there. Welcome to MTV Volcano Cribs. Follow me this way. Volcano Cribs. I used to love Cribs as a child. A very strange child, wasn't I? Now, you may be able to see my volcano just up here. This is Prometheus. Say hello to Prometheus. Hello, Prometheus. Just shout, he can hear you. He's not deaf, you know. Now, Prometheus is a very special volcano. Do you want to know why? Yes. Because Prometheus has the number one dart ride in the world for both you and I. How does that sound? Oh, gosh. Is that it? Is that all you have to say? That's all I've got to say, yeah. Right, well, this way for me, please. You also get a great view of the false perspective as well. Shh. That's my little secret to saving money, you see. <laughs> now, if you look all around you, tell me something that's missing. Missing? Yes, tell me what's missing from this view. But more particular of the lake, what's missing right now at this time of day? Fantasmic. No, no, not at this time of the day. What is normally on the lake at this time of the day? Parade. The parade, however, the parade is unfortunately cancelled due to the bad weather conditions. So instead, I'm the parade. Play, 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 parade. Oh, yes, play, play. <laughs> Wrong park. <laughs> it is gorgeous round here. The parade, even though everyone plays. I still can't believe it's Easter. It ends tomorrow, like I say. Look at that, absolutely gorgeous. Right, we're gonna have a few more re rides. Get our last rides into the trip. God, it's crazy. And we'll speak to you a little bit later on. Gorgeous. Now, it's not very often that you see me and Alex being classy. But with it being our last theme park visit of the trip, we thought we'd come into one of the <laughs> very nice cocktail bars here at Tokyo Disney Sea. And it's very, very nice, isn't it? I've got a little uh, little cocktail down here, China Blue. It's very, very nice. Not the biggest cocktail I've ever had, not quite Europa Park size, but it's, it's nice. Not bad at all, reasonably priced. And I've got a, a milk, milk cocktail. cocktail, and it has actually very strong. What's in it? it is, I saw some vodka going in. I did see a bottle of vodka and I saw about two shot glasses of milk. Mm -hmm. And then beside the ice, I couldn't actually tell you, but it tastes I've got one scoop of ice cream with a wafer. How wonderful. Weather's been special, that one. Yeah, <laughs> weather's been special, yeah. yeah. It's very, very nice, isn't it? Lovely. And this is all built underneath where you saw us walking around, just underneath the pools in like the big castle building. So, Alex. Cheers, mate, to and the Asian Mega Trip 2017. And finally, a break from seeing you. Thanks, everyone. Very nice. Oh. This is a really nice little area in Lost River Delta. You want a juicy banana? Oh, yeah, well, today I feel the juicy carrot would be better choice. Oh, yes, look at that, very nice and juicy. Like the meet and greet over there. We're going back on the Disney Sea Transit steamer this time on a bit of a different journey than we did in the day one vlog. Got some really some nice bamboo. views. Some bamboo. bamboo. I hope it's bamboo, not a really long asparagus. <laughs> That was a really, really nice cocktail, that was. It's worth pointing out, there's quite a few nice cocktail bars throughout the parks here at busy. Tokyo Disneyland. Yeah, really, really nice. Tokyo Disneyland and Tokyo Disney Sea have both got bars, actually, so. Straight to the end. <laughs> Just a short five minute wait to get on the boat. So nice how they've got these. Normally with an attraction like this at other parks, you'd be waiting like 20 minutes between boats. Here, there must be like seven or eight boats going round because there's another one on its way down. What's your favorite part of Heathrow Airport, Sean? Favorite part of Heathrow Airport? Right, the T5 pods. Well, I was going to say, T2 for me, it's got Really nice views of Mermaid Lagoon as we make our way under the bridge. It's a mysterious isle. Here we 
you go. Get ready for the nicest view you'll ever get inside a theme park. Made even better when you're down here, actually, on the river itself. Look at that. How big does Prometheus look from down here? Great views of the Nautilus as well. I'm going to miss this park so much, I really am. It is so beautiful. number eight on a walk on Aquatopia. We absolutely love this. It's a really, really good flat. Hey guys, I feel so sick. <laughs> Hello! Hey! The interaction you can get with people is so good on this. Hello! No, <laughs> nothing. Look how quiet it is. It's, it's crazy. It's going anywhere. Like, no... Hey! Nothing. Nothing. Great. <laughs> Ah. We have had some really good interactions now. We're on the other side this time as well. Loads of different sequences out of eight rides. I bet we've only had probably two what have been the same. Lots of different ways around, lots of different motions, so to speak. It's a very, very clever ride. If you look very close, you can just see the track. Oh! Hi! Yeah. I'm so dizzy. <laughs> I'm so dizzy. I can't believe it. Eight rides. We've had about 45 minutes on it. The queues just walk on. I love it. Oh. Aquatopia. Uh, <laughs> oh, it's a good it's spin. Oh my oh. god. We're not, I'm sure we've not had a spin that long. No, oh my god, that's so dizzy. God, that's so dizzy. <laughs> We're in on the Disney Sea Electric Railway for one final time over to the American waterfront. It's a little rise like this that brings so much character to the park, and I'm really going to miss it. I really am. This place is gorgeous, it really is. ディズニーシーエレクトリックレールウェイをご利用いただきありがとうございます安全のためその途中は立ち上がらないようお願いしますそれでは王道ディスカバリーからアメリカンウォーターフロントの旅をやってご待ちニューヨークへの旅をお
We got some punch, pizzazz, yeah. Ooh, and how, but all you gotta do is rub that lamp and I'll say, Mr. Aladdin, sir, what will your pleasure be? Let me take your order, jot it down. You ain't never had a friend like me. No, no, no. Life is your best friend. <laughs> I have made a deal. Come on, whisper what it is. Is that a hot tub? You ain't never had hey, you got an audience now. You ain't never had a friend, never had a friend. Finale, come on. You ain't never had a friend like me. Wow, wow. Wow, wow. Wow, wow. wow. Wah, wah, wah. You ain't never had a friend like me. Yeah. <laughs> it's so wet. <laughs> On that note, the time has come that we've been building up for a lot. It's time to watch the nighttime show here at St. Joe Disney Sea. It is fantastic! Woo! Fantastic! Oh boy! Now, here we, go. we absolutely Woo. love this. It'll be the third time that we've watched this show. We've saved it for the final part of our days we've from Disney Sea, this show is very, very different to that of the other two Fantasmics because it's on the lagoon just over there in the Mediterranean harbour. Let's just say there's no stage, there's no mountain. Everything what's involved in this all comes out onto the lake on very large barges and I can't wait to share it with you guys. So we'll make our way over to the Mediterranean harbour and get our spot ready for Fantasmic. Journey to the Centre of the Earth actually has 10 inversions. When I say it has 10 inversions, I'm actually... Prometheus, wow. Fuego! I love it.
is so fantastic here at Tokyo Disney Sea. I've wanted to see that for so long, and like I say, we've watched it quite a few nights this trip. And wow, I'll just let Alex sort of explain what do you think of the show first off? So let's do that moment. <laughs> Uh, oh my god, incredible. Like, I've seen Fantasmic, I've seen Florida and California, and there's moments from all three I absolutely adore, uh, obviously, including this one. And this one, though, is 360. Anywhere you stand around this lagoon, you will see this show. You might get a different angle, you might not get as good a view, but where we stood here, wow. Oh my god, incredible. With Mount Prometheus involved in the show, like, it's there, it was smoking. There like, it is, yeah. <laughs> and that hat is sensational. Like, the things that go on around that, Incredible. Some really key moments in that in that show though for me, the dragon. Yes. Yeah, so the dragon good stands out with me so much. The dragon is very, very different to the ones you used to be used to Florida and California. Not a big grand structure that rises on the ground. It rises from a boat and pushes its way through the magic mirror, which actually does elevate as well on a big ship over there. And oh my god, there's so much pyro. Like it, it, you'd think the thing would blow up with the amount of pyro that's still attached to it. <laughs> We, it's crazy. We, you could, if you'd have seen the video, like if, you, if you've not listened, but if you'd seen a video of us two watching that reaction, you'd see me and Sean laughing because we genuinely thought the dragon's not going to make it out of this, of this episode of Fantastic. Three episode. times we've watched this trip, and every time has just been stunning. And you know what? The way that's not put people off, everyone has stood here. And you know what? Every review we've heard of this show has been exactly the same as that. It's just incredible, breathtaking, and that. Wow. What's your favourite scene, would you say, out of the whole show? You know, it's got to be the dragon for me. Yeah. Because it's just so impressive. The, the lagoon catches fire. Not as much as you see in Fantastic in Walt Disney World. I think that one still offers the best for all around fire and fuego. But, oh my god, the pyrotechnics. There's so much pyro in that show, it's on every single night. And, and, and you know, just seeing it in, in such a picturesque landscape, I couldn't, I couldn't ask for more. I could not ask for more. It is gorgeous, and I'll follow up what Alex said, really. I mean, my favourite scene in that as well, of course, the dragon. And as you mentioned, what's amazing about that show is you've got the magic mirror, which is brilliant as it is. I mean, it's huge when it comes out on the barge. And then when the dragon pushes up through it, Disney actually are very, very clever, because with this show being 360, of course, there's a lot of technical stuff going on as well. What they actually do is make sure that you're looking away from the magic mirror when the dragon is pushing through. It's all part of the effects, because there's a lot. If you're looking for it, there's a lot of tech and stuff going on in places, uh, what they don't want you to see. And it's very, very clever. They'll have the fire coming out of Prometheus, and then, oh, you'll look back over, and before you know it, you've got the mirror lowering down, the dragon coming out. It's all very, very clever. Uh, but what I do love the most about this show is that scene with the dragon, the soundtrack. I think the amount of pyrotechnics is amazing. And I actually disagree with Alex on the fire side of things. I actually think there's more fire in this than any other version. Because in the other version, you don't get all the flame machines all around the centre barge. You don't get all the flame machines around the dragon either. You literally get the one breath of fire and then just the lake. I just mean the water catching fire. I don't oh, mean okay. every, all the pyrotechnics. I personally think there's Definitely, more fire There's a lot more fire in this, more more fire in this uh, show. Bear yeah. in mind, you've got all that coming out of Prometheus yeah. as well, you know. Uh, so I, I do think there is the most fire in that. Uh, in terms of the show in general, I love it. I like all the different boats that is going around uh, on the lagoon and the fact you can watch it 360. And the fact that, to be honest, you don't have to be here that early to get a good spot for it. I mean, tonight we could have rocked up 10 minutes before uh, walked over that bridge, come and stood here and been absolutely fine. Because it's us, granted, every time we've watched it, we've been here at least an hour before to make sure we 100% get our spot. Uh, but yeah, what an amazing show Fantasmic is. Uh, I love all the different versions. I do miss seeing the Mark Twain uh, in this one in the Columbia that you get over in Disneyland's. But of course, at the moment, that isn't running in California uh, due to the whole Star Wars Land project. However, it is set to launch in the next few weeks. So I can't wait to watch a video of that and hopefully get out to see that again soon. 10 out of 10 show. Wouldn't change anything about it. I loved it. What a show. Oh, yeah, incredible. And, and you know, like now, we're going to watch a firework display just across the lane. Don't leave this area. Be here 15, at least 15 minutes before. Listen to the pre-show, get yourself into the mood. You won't, you won't see anyone else reacting unless you really listen. And honestly, that full, I'd say about 45 minute experience if you include the pre-show and the build-up and the anticipation of being stood here. Nothing is more breathtaking. You might disagree watching this. You might have seen this, you might not have. But there's nothing to me more breathtaking than standing here, no matter whether it's rain or shine, whether it's dark or light, 
watching a show like that. Ladies and the very and clever thing here is as well, girls. if you've watched our vlog from Tokyo Disneyland, you'll know that we saw the very underwhelming firework display, <laughs> Happiness on High. There's no doubt about it. However, Happiness on high. Yeah. you actually get it from in this park too, because both the parks are built next to each other. They're built back to back pretty much. So you actually get to see the fireworks at the same time as what you would do in Disneyland in here. But to be honest, I'm sure Alex would agree, it looks better in here. Yeah. It really does look better because you get all the lights what are used in Fantasmic for the stars and then you get the fireworks. If you stand right where we are, just here, you get them literally just behind the speaker tower just there. So. I just have to clear one thing up. It does say in that announcement that it lights up the sky around the, the lagoon. I wouldn't quite agree with that. It, it lights up that corner of the lagoon very, very nicely, but the whole sky... Not Let's say the sure. Fantasmic really steals the crown Fantasmic, here for nighttime yeah, and shows. But look, most people have left. Like this area is empty. You can stand anywhere here. Like, I'm sure me and Sean are going to be dancing to this show. It's a five-minute firework display. It's the last part of our trip. Uh, anything else you want to say on Fantasmic? It was that good. It's just have we Fantasmic missed anything? Fantasmic describes the show. Yeah, it and of course Mickey, absolutely awesome in that. Plays yeah. a really good part. Half Japanese, half English, but you know what it works. And the soundtrack's definitely right. the best of the three. Yeah, as well. Mo mo modern, contemporary, fresh. I do really feel. love the soundtrack. I feel good. Good. I feel pumped. If you ask me to pick my favourite Fantasmic, I wouldn't be able to do it because I do I love all three for different reasons and different venues as well. I love sitting there uh, looking over all the frontier land and the rivers of America over in Disneyland. I do enjoy to an extent, well, yeah, I do enjoy to an extent Walt Disney World Mexican uh, wave. and getting the whole interaction with the Mexican waves. Uh, but in terms of standing right here looking at Prometheus, this is definitely the best location. Uh, but in terms of a show, there's certain things I love about each one. Uh, and there's different things you don't get in others what you do in certain ones but it's definitely worth pointing out this is definitely the most visible one to see from anywhere you don't need to be sitting in a certain place and wow it was absolutely stunning what a show fantastic here at Tokyo Disney Sea. anyway I think it's time for a bit of a dance don't you before we go and do our last ride and end our last theme vlog of the trip here it is it's time for happiness on high Ooh, good time with the lights I knew it was coming <laughs> Amazing trip. It's been amazing. Oh, so welcome. This is it. This is it. This is the final fireworks we're seeing on this trip. Oh my god. And it might not be the best fireworks, but this sums up our trip. Out with a bang, so to speak. Literally out with a bang. The volcano to erupt at any time. You're so welcome. So as you saw there in the fireworks, you saw some facts there about our trip and we had our last ride on Journey to the Centre of the Earth and took quite a bit of time just walking out the park and enjoying it all and it's about an hour later and we're back here for some reflections, not illuminations, reflections of Earth, that's at Epcot, but for some reflections about Tokyo Disney Sea to wrap up this vlog. Uh, now what, what, where do I start? What, what can I say about this park? It's absolutely stunning and we did get a bit of emotional walking out didn't we? We really did. Uh, the things I love about this park, of course, Journey to the Centre of the Earth, my new number one dark ride. We've done some amazing dark rides on this trip, but Journey just tops it. And it's not just because of the ride experience, it's the queue line, it's the area that it's within, uh, and just everything about that ride is just stunning. It's also quite a good thrill ride. I mean, you get a bit of airtime on that as well, and it might not be the longest ride, it's about three minutes long, but what there is in there is some absolutely gorgeous scenes, and it's very, very relaxing, isn't it? Uh, as you glide around there on this test track style, system uh, really slow through the scenes uh, not much sort of thrilling going on at all just beautiful caverns with all the uh, all the beautiful lights and it is gorgeous and then of course 
that big sort of finale scene where you see the monster in that big race out. What an amazing ride that really is. Uh, apart from that at the park, yeah, there's just so much that really is. That's the standout thing, but the themed areas, the seven themed ports, the fact you can get the electric railway uh, or the boat ride around, it is just gorgeous. In terms of my favorite themed area, God, it's, it is so hard, it really is. Mysterious Island, I love it, uh, I really do stand in there, but all the seven themed areas are gorgeous. I love the American waterfront, uh, I really enjoy doing Tower of Terror. In terms of Tower of Terror, I am gonna say that I do still prefer uh, Florida's version, the original version of Tower of Terror, mainly because of the ride system. I feel like it's just been toned down a bit here. Well, it has been toned down a bit here, hasn't it? It's just a, um, it's just a tad. <laughs> yeah, and the theming's great, but you know, yeah, I just can't get over how much is being toned down here. Uh, but don't get me wrong, still beautiful rides. Come and see it. The pre show is great. The whole story of it is, is gorgeous as well. Uh, in terms of other rides, Indiana Jones, again, fantastic. A really sort of modern version uh, of that classic ride from Disneyland. And it was great. It really Indy. was. Uh, Indy! We've loved it, haven't we? And it was, it was great to see it. Uh, Mermaid Lagoon, all the indoor area was great. I loved Lost River Delta. It didn't really have a soundtrack in the background. It was more the natural sounds, the birds, uh, all that kind of stuff. Here you got the Natural sounds of air conditioning, you know. How crazy. <laughs> um, yeah, really gorgeous areas in that park. Up, yeah. uh, I'll let Alex speak for a little bit. What are your sort of highlights? Would you say from, from I'd that I'd say park? personally, I mean, Journey to the Center of the Earth is incredible, but for the for the park as a whole, it will be so much easier just to say um, my least favorites purely because it's easier and quicker, and that's nothing. There is no least favorites. Everything in its own, in its own right was incredible. The park, I mean, the discoveries that you, you would find walking around, you could spend a year walking around that park and see something different every single day. So many new paths and corridors and, and signs and facades. and There's a lot to read as you go around. Too much. Yeah. Too much for a short visit, really, and it's a shame that it kind of has to come to an end for us here for now, but hopefully there will be a future for us coming to this park. and. It's, I think it's both a mutual thing. It is our new number one park in the world. And, 100%. Uh, you know, four years ago when I first went to Europa Park, I fell in love with it. I thought it was amazing. The theme, I'd never seen theming quite like it. Um, and, and here we go, it's sitting here tonight saying about Disney Sea. And I really feel like I'm at the pinnacle point now when it comes to th theming and scenery and experience. I don't think there's anything out there what's going to top that in terms of theming level. In terms of ride hardware, but don't get me wrong, it might not have the strongest in terms of actual ride hardware. In fact, I do feel like the park, in a way, does lack a major coaster. Of course, you've got Raging Spirits, the Indiana Jones theme coaster, which is actually really nice. And the theme on there is a lot better than the version at Paris. And of course, you've got all the fire effects on there, which are stunning. They're running all day, 14 hour days, and it is amazing. And then that leads me on to talk more about the actual operations at the park. Operations, the best I've ever seen. Uh, not just the Disney Sea, but uh, Tokyo Disneyland as well. Both of these parks here, amazing operations, aren't they? And the cast members have been outstanding. They really have. I feel so welcome. And uh, yeah, not just inside Disney, but Japan in general is such a nice country. It really is. One of the kind of highlights I have to mention. Whilst watching Fantasmic earlier on, um, I, I witnessed a young girl drop her Donald Duck teddy. Uh, her plush toy and it kind of fell off a balcony onto the floor near where I was sat and I was going to go and fetch it for her and pass it up because I thought I'd be nice but actually a cast member came charging over picks up Donald Ben in my I didn't speak I don't speak any Japanese picks up this really? Donald Duck yeah I know you wouldn't believe it would disappointed you? Um, picks up this <laughs> Donald Duck and, and start stroking its head like because it just been dropped and actually pulls out a, a, a band-aid or a plaster out of, it, out of their pocket and, and, and opens it, puts it on Donald's head uh, because obviously Donald had a little fall. And see things like that, the little things that aren't, they're not paid to do. They're paid to give top top customer service and guest service, but the little things that go a long way. And, and, and I said the same about the whole park, looking at little tiny bits of rock work that are actually so individually detailed. Hashtag I'm, rock work. I'm going to sit up a little bit so I look <laughs> a bit more presentable while I'm just shrinking in the corner. But no, wow, what a part, what an amazing experience, what a trip, a trip of a lifetime. It really it? has, and we just wanted to sort of enjoy that moment walking out and taking it all in. We thought, you know what, we're just going to be an emotional wreck if we do this inside the park. Oh, too much. Yeah, yeah let's get back, and we really reflect on it. But what a gorgeous park. And this is a chance for you guys to comment below and ask us your questions, because when we return from this trip, we're going to put together, all these vlogs are online, we're going to put together a video about sort of everything, summarise everything from all the parks, and of course the transport, 
support and all that kind of stuff. So all you need to do is comment down below on this video uh, and we'll try and answer as many as we can when we do this video. It'll be online in the next couple of weeks uh, at some point. Uh, so make sure you do stay tuned for that one. Uh, but here we go, the last vlog from this mega trip and uh, wow, it really has been an emotional roller coaster. We've seen so much, we've done so much, we've completed all the Disney parks and yeah, just thank you for an amazing trip. I wouldn't have wanted to do it with anyone else. We've gone through so much together and this trip's just been incredible. We're, it not, really getting, has. we're not getting married anytime soon. That's definitely that's not. Still, that's <laughs> not. There is still a line, you know. It's, we've done it, we've been through a lot, but we're not getting married. Don't worry about that. I that. just really hope that all of you have enjoyed the many hours of entertainment that me and Alex have provided. Uh, from this trip and just sharing our memories, what you've seen out of all the vlogs, if you've watched them all, it's about a day's worth of content what you've seen, about 24 hours worth of content, plus more bits to come in terms of POVs and that sort of thing over the next few weeks. And that's crazy, so well done to everyone who sat through it and, and watched it all. Whee! Congratulations. Very, very brave. And if you've not gone back and seen them all, then please do go back and see the memories and follow them through. At the end of the day, we've put all these videos on in order that we've done it. Go back, follow these vlogs, and join us throughout the journey on our biggest ever trip so far, anyway, in the history of Theme Park Worldwide. What a trip. We could sit here all night and ramble on about it. But well, we've got to go to bed. I'm we've tired. got to go to bed. That's it, Bruce. <laughs> a long journey home. But thank you very much for watching this vlog and every other vlog we've done from our Asia Mega Trip 2017. Stay tuned for a summary video coming very, very soon here on the channel. And remember, if you've got any questions, just comment down below. I feel so sad. I don't want to go back. And it's just been an emotional roller coaster. Before he really says his has. name, I'm going to say my name as well. Thank you for watching. I am Alex Crump. That's Go been on. Alex. <laughs> and of course, I'm Sean Sandbrook. Thank you for watching Theme Park Worldwide and the Asian Mega Trip 2017. <laughs> and for the final time this trip, come on, you've got to join me and say it. It means it's time to cue those, those credits. credits. Oh, Bye, guys. Oh, my God. He's trying to pick me up. Oh, I can't do See it. See you guys.